There's been a vague memory of a show in my mind. For years, I just searched the highest and lowest points of the internet trying to find any proof it existed, any scrap of evidence that I didn't just make it up. The memories are so vivid, how could it just fall off the face of the earth like that? Well, after years and years of searching, I finally never found anything. Then some YouTuber just casually mentioned it while I was browsing their Tumblr. That was anticlimactic. Let's see what trends we can analyze out of this show. The 90s are one of the most beloved times by people of the recent generation, but a lot of it is misremembered. When you think of the 90s, you probably imagine big puffy neon colored jackets. These are styles from the late 80s that carried over into the early 90s. They were only in style until 92 at the absolute max. The style of the 90s was really more sleek and black, featured in big films like The Matrix and Pulp Fiction, as well as obscure media like John Woo's TV movie Blackjack. If smaller media like that was going for that style, it's because it was trying to put on display the popular style of the time to get people's attention. A lot of people end up associating this style with the early 2000s, however, as a sort of transition into the pop punk and emo phases that were at their biggest during this time, rather than with the 90s where they started gaining popularity. Similarly, a lot of people will label a bunch of shows as programs 90s babies grew up on, but almost a majority of these will be shows from the early 2000s. And the same people will say that time period was one of the worst to grow up, in terms of entertainment and culture. How can there be, at the same time, such a condemnation and love for the early 2000s? Like any decade, at the beginning, the culture from the previous years will carry over. A cultural shift doesn't just happen overnight. But with the years of the early 2000s came the turn of the millennia. I feel these jumbled memories come from the rush towards and excitement for this new time to arrive. With it came the promise of new technologies and a smaller world. And, uh, the end of the world, but that didn't happen, so... Yay? This led to a lot of experimentation, and thus a lot of products that very much feel of their time. The ones that were big hits were loved by the people and would want to be claimed as the time period they grew up in, while the bad would be easy to blame on the changing times. Today we're going to take a look at a show I feel really demonstrates that well. Zix. No, not the cryptocurrency. No, not the laundry detergent. No, not the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle character. What? I didn't even know that existed. Man, Zix is a more used name than I thought. How is that possible? This Zix. Zix was a 2004 Canadian production by Rainmaker Studios and ran for three seasons on YTV. Rainmaker is still around producing content, but they got a pretty messy history that is way out of the scope of this channel. Uh, moving on. It was a hybrid show that blended live action and computer animated scenes. Zix Funky Z. Yes. That's really her name. It's basically a space cop that protects a giant network you can go into. This was a trope in the 90s, but the internet didn't become as widespread as quickly as people like to remember. It was still kind of early in 2004, and a lot of media was still imagining it as this cool, expansive virtual world to explore. Aiding her in this network is a sassy space alien dog sidekick. She has crash landed on Earth, which is filled with activity from the big bad evil empire of the show, the Hargok. So she sticks around and accidentally befriends two humans, Adam and his friend Griff, that help her in her fight against the monster of the week. The main goal of each season is to get to the next level of the network to take down the big bad. There's a reason for the video game terms brought up in the show like levels and leveling up besides having a cyber world theme. The unique thing about Zix, its main hook, is that it was produced using video game software. It used the game engine LithTech to create the animated scenes. This was actually the first time ever that this was done for a TV show. Because of this, the animated scenes have a pretty unique look for the time, resembling something from the early days of the Xbox and PS2 generation, namely Halo. This was genuinely unique at the time as other kids programming and movies that wanted 3D animated scenes usually went for CGI. It did give the show its own look, but that was not enough to hook audiences in much of North America. 
Zix premiered in 2004. It aired on YTV in Canada and briefly on Cartoon Network in North America. On Cartoon Network, the show only aired for four episodes before being shafted to CN's new online streaming service at the time, before being cut out of their lineup entirely. Yeah, Cartoon Network had live action shows well before that CN real block train wreck happened. Over in Canada on YTV, Zix ran from 2004 to 2009 with three 13 episode seasons. I guess they had a more positive reception over there. The show is jam packed with that classic Canadian child acting. The main kid, Adam, even has that classic haircut. For what it was trying to be, the show was fine, I guess? Jump in on the growing hype for video games by integrating them into the lore and aesthetic of the show. But of course, they did not have the budget for it. Right away in the first episode, the show thrusts you straight into the plot and the 3D animated scenes. Almost immediately, we see the extent of what the 3D scenes are even able to offer. Idle animation shots of characters throwing off one-liners and shooting a laser at some goons. It's terribly limited and just looks goofy in motion. It looks awful today, but let's see how the rest of the episode holds up. They end up in this world they call The Keep, to save some Doc Brown looking homeless dude being dragged by some evil goons into The Keep. They save the day and he runs away. After some quips from the dog psychic to make sure you know he's a cool dude with attitude, it cuts to the next day. Which by the way, back up for a second, you can tell they designed this guy to be a toy they wanted to sell later if this show had actually reached the popularity they hoped for. Hey, I probably would've bought it. But back to the episode, it just cuts immediately to the Doc Brown guy approaching our main male lead the next morning to give him some diamond artifact. To which Adam just immediately responds with, Do you know my mom? <laughs> what? What kind of people is she hanging out with, kid, if you think this is normal behavior from her friends? Um, I won't be much longer. I should be home in a week. And I'm so glad. I think some of the workers have been talking about the artifacts. And oh, okay. Turns out we just find out right away in the next scene that she's an archaeologist that has disappeared. This show's pacing is a little too fast for its own good at times, but it's really just going with the flow of the early 2000s. Everything was fast cuts and weird camera angles to show off the new technology, editing methods, and attitude of shows because that was what was popular at the time. The episode keeps going with Adam and Griff basically discovering that this entire evil space empire just conveniently set up base in their school. Guess the real estate prices were too low to ignore? It was a pre-2008 world, kids. A goon masquerading as a school therapist hypnotizes the kid into telling them where the diamond artifact is so they can steal it. When he comes to, Adam and his friends realize they got to go back to get it. So they go back to school, hop back in the network, and it turns out every damn faculty member is in on the thing, even the janitor. Our forces are growing and soon, all the universe will again tremble before us. Especially the janitor. Zix reluctantly teams up with them again and saves the day by breaking the diamond into pieces. This show wants to take itself seriously, but I swear, the timing in this scene is almost comedic. A crystal! No! Vermin! Leave those crystal fragments alone! No! <laughs> God, that's too good. At the end, being a highly efficient trained space cop, Zix still doesn't want the kids teaming up with her for their safety. And she's right, what are you kids, like 12? But Adam is a rebellious 2004 kid that doesn't play by the rules and reveals he has plans to stick around because he kept a piece of the diamond. Because of course he did. We got two more seasons of this stuff. And I honestly can't imagine watching two more seasons of this. If you've seen one episode of Zix, you've seen them all. This was back in 2004. You weren't intended to binge shows, and this show was definitely meant to be seen week to week. You notice the repetitiveness immediately if you watch a couple episodes back to back like I did for this video. For whatever reason, probably budget, the bad guys never leave the school, so the setup for every other episode is someone in the group falling for a trap and getting saved by the member that didn't get caught in the trap. It gets goofy fast. I mean, look, this is episode two. They're not even trying to act anymore. I'm sure like many of you clicking on this video, I thought I made up this show for a while. Going back to rewatch it now though, it's not good. It's fine for what it's trying to do as a kid's show. All the actors feel like better voice actors in the animated scenes than they do as actual actors in the live action scenes. It's classic Canadian cheese. And if that's what you're looking for, you could do way worse. 
Zix as a show feels like an idea that could have easily been conceived in the 90s, but is very 2000s in its execution. Like the theory suggested before, if it was popular and loved, it could have easily been labeled a show ripped straight from the 90s for 2004, but instead is forgotten and is just another cheesy children's show from the early 2000s. It's fine, like I said. I had fun pointing and laughing at it, and it's not like there's anywhere to go outside at the time of this recording. I had fun during my time with it, and I hope you had fun with your time watching this video. Let me know any topics you want to see covered in the next video, and thanks for watching. Remember to drink water.